Hello everyone, welcome to a new video of the Indicator Store. And if you remember, some time ago we saw how to join or group signals. I, I will leave the link to that video on the description. On this case, for example, if you have more than one system, in this example, I have signal from Goody's trend and from plot signals. One is showing small triangles and the other big triangles. So on this case, we have shorts from the two systems, but you can see there is a delay between one and the other. Here we have a long and a short from one system. And in this case, we have a long from the system one and then a long from the system two. What we saw on the previous uh, video was um, how to group or join. That means if I have signals from two or more systems at no more than X number of bars, for example, if my threshold is three bars, then I am watching if I have three uh, signals from the two systems. For example, on this window, we have one short. Still the same, still the same. And now I, I have a short from the other system, but not from the other. Okay. But if my threshold is one um, extra bar, then we have a confluence. Um, same here. There, there are no uh, signals from, two, from the two different setups. And on this case, as soon as we are detecting this signal, then we have a confluence. How we did that? We can do that with the max indicator. Let me show you because this is really simple. Uh, if the signal is a plot, and this is important, no? Uh, we can see that the signals here are plots. So we can calculate the maximum of that plot with a signal. For example, this uh, triangle is from the plot signals with these parameters, two and two. Now, if I add the max indicator with the size of my time window, for example, four bars, and inside the input series, I place the indicator that create the signal. It was plot signals with the parameters two and two. And this indicator has two plots, one for the shorts and another for the longs. So we need to check signal down. And this is a signal down. Now I want to show the max indicator, no with the line, because a line, um, it, it looks better if we, if we draw something like dots or dash. Let's use dots with a size of three, so it is visible, with a color of um, maybe something pink or violet, okay? What we get is this. So we can see here uh, four dots, but we, we also get the zeros and they are, uh, they are distorting the, the chart because the zero is too far from the price action, but we can turn off the um, auto scale on the max indicator, turn off. So when the indicator is near the price action, it shows the values. When it is not near, like the zero, it is uh, not visible, like here. So now, what we get from the max indicator is um, when we have a signal, we have that signal for the following n bars, uh, what we defined inside the max indicator. 
for example, if we place 8 bars into 4, then we have 8 consecutive dots. In the rest of the, of the chart, it is 0. Eh? You can see at the bottom, the, the max is 0. And when it has a value, it is the price where the plot is um, detected. That means that, imagine that this triangle is painted here and this triangle is painted here. So we have a string of dots and also a string of, if we do the same with the other signal, we will get a string of dots from one signal and a string of dots from the other. That means that in this time interval, we get a value different from zero from the two max indicators. And this is when we have a confluence. A confluence with a size of this uh, window. And the first time that we have a confluence, we can consider that this is a signal. This is the first time when the signals from two different setups are at a distance less or equal than the max window. Okay? And this works even if this signal happens first. Because now what we get this. So this is a confluence. It doesn't matter if the signal one happens after or first than the, than the other. Now, another method is to, uh, instead of joining or group signal, is uh, to chain uh, an event with an another. So something has to happen first to be ready to, to follow the, the other event. For example, I want a small triangle only to start searching for a big triangle. And this is, I have not explained this because this is even simpler because we don't need to calculate the max of the second indicator. Okay, We only need a max from the first and then to check if we have a signal from the second indicator and also the counter from the max window is uh, working like the dots. If we have dots and also we have the signal from the second indicator, then we have a confluence. That, that means one event, the, the first one, is chained to the second. Okay? This is one method. In fact, this is the simplest method because we can also, um, with markers, we can create a condition. Uh, let me show you. If I copy the this uh, signal with markers copy, for example, this is the small short and uh, this is the name for this signal because this is a small triangle and it is a copy of the indicator um, plot signals the parameters were two and two and the plot is signal down okay and this marker copy is going to show a dot. Let's make it bigger so we can see it. Okay, the, this big dot. We can make it small so it is not visible. A little cyan dot. And now we can create a logic, a really complex logic, but the simplest version will be that this variable, the one that we copied, small short, is greater than zero because here it has a value, the price, 
and when it is not a, a signal, it is zero. So we can type that. Small short is greater than zero. And we get something like this. We get a signal and it is only valid on one and only one bar. Now, if I want to chain this to another instance, to another uh, logic, like for example this, I can use the option sustain this version, where I can wait, for example, five bars. I can also cancel that condition, but we don't need to cancel that. We, we wait five bars after this uh, is true. So we can see that we have five consecutive bars where the result of markers logic is true. True means it is equal to one. Okay, So we can use this as a filter for the other signal. Maybe we, are, we can copy the other signal. Let, let's copy the other signal. So we need another markers copy and we need to copy that triangle. Let's make it more big so we can see. Now I can copy this triangle with another markers copy. Now I need to copy Woody's trend and the plot is signal down. So another markers copy. This is the, uh, the big short. The other was the small short, no? the big triangle short. Um, and on input series, we place the indicator, put this trend, and the plot, signal down. Okay. And what can I show for the copy overlapping this triangle? A small blue dot. Just for checking, let me make it big. Okay, this big blue dot, now make it small, almost invisible. So now I have this variable and we can do the, the same as we did here. Detect with another markers logic when small short is greater than zero, okay? Uh, sorry, small short, no, big short. Big short. Okay, now, now here we are detecting this triangle. Hmm? And the same, we can extend this for another n number of bars. Let's make it the same number, five bars. Okay, and now when we have a confluence, we have a signal. Or even more, we can wait a certain number of bars until something happens. For example, while this is true and this is true and something else happens, like for example, maybe a red bar or whatever, then we can create a signal. But the simplest way is when this is true and this is true. Uh, first of all, I need to turn off this signal because I, I am not triggering nothing when this is a signal. So on this logic, we don't want any signal. Okay, just the histogram. And on the other, the same. I don't want any signal. Just the result of the histogram. Now, how can I export? these uh, zeros here and ones here. On markers logic, we have the option to create a variable. Okay, and this is the uh, small short result or any variable that you want. Copy. Okay, and now uh, we can do the same here. We can export that. 
create a variable and the variable is big short result it, it makes no sense to make it so complex because we can use the max indicator but just to have an idea what we can do with logic because with logic we can export the result into another variable that means that now this histogram is a small short result and this histogram is a big short result so now we can add another market logic where i detect when both uh, results are um, true or greater than zero so small short result is greater than zero and also a big small resort big short result is greater than zero when this is true now i can paint the signal also draw the histogram and also create a fast signal to trigger an order go long for example and we get this so on all this interval both results are true but only the first time i am triggering triggering an order okay and even more this result can also be uh, exported i can save that result this into another variable and so on it can it can continue forever or even more i can place a sustain for example 10 bars okay so the last time it was true it was on this bar then we have another 10 extra bars so we can give time for another logic to happen so that that means here we are detecting the first time that we have a small triangle and a big triangle at no less than five bars and when that happens we are here we wait 10 bars for something else and, and the, in this way we can chain several um, more complex trade trade setups a anyway the 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 complexity that we can create is almost um, it has no no limits but if we are not using markers and we are limited to builder we can use the method of a max because we can calculate the max of one signal the max of the other signal and we only need to check that both maximums both max of the signal are greater than zero when that happens then if we need to trigger another condition in that case we need to create a variable okay uh, so it is possible it is more complex but it is possible okay that will be everything for today hope this video has been useful for if you have any question or comment uh, we have a chat room with free support on discord the instructions are on the description of this video. Thank you everyone. Bye bye.